Hello artists and welcome back to Art with Mrs. Kellogg. For this lesson, we're going to use the elements of art to create some spring tulips. Now, I want to tell you more about the lesson and the art supplies you will need. So meet me over at my workspace and we'll get started. These are some examples of the spring tulips we're going to create today. Now let me tell you the art supplies you will need for today's project. But first, you need to set up your workspace, so make sure you put down an art mat or a paper towel before you start. You're going to need paper and the size is 6 inches by 12 inches and you want the paper heavy enough to apply watercolor to. You're going to need a pencil with an eraser, a black sharpie marker, oil pastels, or you could use crayons, your brush, a cup filled with water, your watercolor set, and don't forget some extra paper towels. Now would be a great time for you to pause the video and meet me back here and we will start having fun creating tulips. Did you set up your workspace and get your supplies? Great, then let's get started. So we're gonna start by using line and shape, but before we do that, we have to write our name on our art paper. Once you've written your name in pencil, what you're gonna do is take your art paper and turn it over. So now your name is on the back. Now we're going to start using the element of art line. And what I'm going to do is make a really big U shape. And I want to make it pretty wide where I can fit four fingers in it. Don't want a tiny little flower because I want big shapes to get a lot of color in all of my shapes. So I'm going to use guide dots. So that's about two fingers here and here. That's going to help me draw bigger. Remember, I'm going to sketch, which means I draw lightly. So I can fit four fingers inside. Now I'm going to erase the lines I don't need. Now I'm going to make my shapes. So it's going to be an oval shape, or you could even make it more like a triangle going to an oval. Remember, you're the artist, you decide. I may go outside my lines, so I don't worry about that because later I can erase any lines I don't want. Now I'm going to overlap, so I'm going to make my shapes touch. I notice this shape may be a little bit smaller than my guideline shape, but I don't really worry about that. If I want a shape bigger, I can always move the line like this. Then I'll take my eraser and erase the lines out. Remember, that's not a mistake. That's how artists work. Once I clean up my drawing and I get the shapes the way I like them, I'm ready to add on some extra petals. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm overlapping. I'm making sure my lines touch my shapes. Now I'm ready to put the stem and the leaves in. If you just want to put the front petals in, these three petals, that's fine. But if you want it a little more dimensional, you can add these shapes behind your bigger shapes in the front. To make the stem, I make a wide rectangle at the top and I curve these lines. Then, I'm going to make my lines go right off the page. So there's my one line. Second line will make the rectangle or the stem. Next step, I'm going to start drawing my leaves in. And you're going to notice I'm going to use a curved line going to a triangle to an oval. If you have different ideas for your leaves, feel free to use your own creative ideas. My next step is to erase the line. I want the leaf in front. I'm going to add an extra line for dimension. That'll go behind the stem. Now I'm going to draw the second leaf. I'm going to start here on my I 
I notice that line went through the other shape. I want this in front. I erase the line out. Next, I want more dimension, so I'm going to add that back line. And I finished drawing my tulip. Now it's time to trace all my shapes before I go to color. So I'm going to take my black Sharpie marker and start to trace all my shapes. Now would be a good time for you to pause the video, trace all your shapes, and meet me back here and we'll start adding color. Did you finish tracing your tulip? Great, then let's add some color. And as you can see, I already organized my colors. So I know I'm gonna put green in the stem and in the leaves. So notice I chose a light color green and a darker color green. That's gonna make my artwork look more three-dimensional and give it some depth. When I think of this, if this is light, I'm going to place this color green to make it darker. And here, light, dark, light. So I'm going to do a red tulip. So pink's going to be my light color, red's my dark color. Some of you might be asking right about now, can I use other colors? And the answer is yes. You just want to make sure you're using a lighter color or a darker color so your shapes will stand out. For example, if you wanted to make a blue tulip, I want to use a light blue and a dark blue. If you wanted to do an orange tulip like this one, I used peach and orange. Notice the light and the dark. And maybe you want to do a yellow and golden-like tulip. So I have my light yellow and then my gold color, which is darker. For this project, I don't recommend using a black oil pastel. The black oil pastel will smear, and if you use black in all your petals, all your shapes will disappear. So that's the reason we use that light color next to a dark color. You could make this petal light, this petal dark, this petal light, or you can do half and half and blend them. It's really up to you. I'm going to start working on my petals to show you what I mean. Now for me, I don't want this striped look. So I'm gonna take my lighter color and blend. Now I'm gonna add my darker color next to that lighter color. Notice I'm always thinking of that light dark pattern when I'm adding my colors. It's okay if some pinks and reds touch. Notice if I make this darker and this lighter, and this is darker and that's lighter, my shapes stand out a lot more. Next, I'm gonna add my light green and my dark green. Now I'm going to blend. Notice when I'm coloring, I try to follow the lines of the petals and the leaves. This is light, this will be dark. This is dark, so I'm going to make the stem lighter. I'm going to continue coloring my tulip in, and then I'm going to add the watercolor. Now would be a great time to pause the video, add your color, and then it'll be time to paint our background. Did you finish coloring in your tulip? Great, then let's have some fun and start painting. For my artwork, I want to have a blue sky in the background. And you'll notice I want to have some darker blues and lighter blues. I don't want a solid color for my background. And I want it to look cloud-like, so I'm going to use my paper towel to blot some areas to create a cloud-like effect. So let me show you how to do that. First step is I wanna make sure my brush is nice and wet. The only way watercolor works is if you add water. 
And when I go into my paints, I want to pretend that I'm petting a kitten or a puppy, just very lightly, just using the tip. I'm going to use this color and spread it all over my paper. Notice I don't always go back every time to get more paint. That will help me to keep some of my areas of my painting lighter and some darker. I want this area a little bit of a darker blue, so I'm going to go back, get some more paint. My paint's pretty thick there, so I need to rinse it and now apply. I want to see the water in my paint. This is where I can use my paper towel to create a cloud-like effect. So I crumple my paper towel up and then I'm going to dab or blot my wet paint. Now I'm going to finish painting the bottom. Notice once I get my paint down, I don't keep painting over it again and again. And I don't want to add a lot of different colors because I might end up with a mud pie painting. For example, if I were to add orange to that blue, it would go gray brown on me. So to keep your colors nice and bright, get your paint down and then move to the areas that you haven't painted. I'm going to continue painting the background of my artwork. Now it's your turn to have some fun painting. Well, that's the end of our spring tulip art lesson. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I want you to always remember when you are creating art to relax, have lots of fun and keep creating. Happy spring, everybody.